Terry, it, it's been so long since I've been on Zoom, I forgot how to use buttons. <laughs> It's funny, isn't it, how how just those few weeks of and that interlude, it is like, oh, now we're starting a brand new year. And it's like, okay, <laughs> what are we what what have we got to uh, move forward with? How are we moving forward with things? Wow. So yesterday was Terry Tuesday. It's the new year and uh, it was Terry Tuesday. So that was like the ninth. And you you did um, your collective reading inside the Women of the Stars chat group. And we're going to watch it. Um, did you want to say anything about it before it started? Because it started out crazy because I was supposed to be there. But then I got this important phone call. And so I was like, bye, Terry. I got to go. And I just left you by yourself. <laughs> yeah, and it was like, uh, OK, I haven't done this in how many weeks? I wasn't sure where I was going. Every week, there was like this. Um, I, I found like it was a chaotic, a chaotic energy. And and it was like okay, what am I getting? But, it, you know, the flow came, but it was just like, uh, you know, usually you're there and you're sort of that anchor and we, we, we move, and it was like, uh, uh. <laughs> but you know, just, I like to throw just, you in new situations. Falling around. <laughs> I like throwing you in new situations. So that, that's Thank what I'm you, saying. Erica. You're welcome. <laughs> Don't worry. You'll always be challenged. So <laughs> I, Exactly. So I think I have it up and I'll go ahead and play it. Um, it seemed to cause a recurring theme in the individual readings. And so we'll discuss the individual readings or I'll allow Terry to we'll watch her um, collective reading. And then there's two by chance, you got a reading yesterday or you, you saw something yesterday special and I saw something yesterday special and uh, we'll talk about that as well as soon as we watch this, which, oh, okay, I found it. Okay. <laughs> okay, let's see, share. And can I make it play? So um, we are going to um, just start our 2024 um what we're going to talk about and it's interesting because 2024 is an eight year and um i'm i'm not i'm not into um i'm, I'm not a, a, um um by any means when it comes to numerology i only know basic stuff but it's an eight year and eight is about um finding abundance and, and finding abundance in our lives and finding abundance in our um just around us and and i think finding that abundance is also about being grateful for what we have and uh, when we're grateful for what we have then we can bring in more of the good things so um i think that this year 2024 is about being grateful and um, allowing the universe to bring us the abundance that we have worked for so um, I think we can all look forward to to those to those aspects of life. So I'm going to pick some cards from this deck, and it's been around for a while. It's the Energy Oracle card by Sandra Ann Taylor, and um, it's just really got some um, some great messages. And, and so I'm just going to ask for just generally what we can um what we can see or what we can do to make this year 2024 one that's advantageous for us and for our movement on our spiritual growth so i'm going to pick three cards and the first card is your sixth chakra the sixth chakra card The next one is attachment. And the third one is um, hmm, a man holding a coin. So that to me is abundant. So um, with those three cards, the sixth chakra, of course, is our third eye. And it's opening up to 
our intuition. So I am getting the sense that our guidance, if we open up to our um, intuitive guidance, it's going to, and we start listening to that inner voice, we are going to be guided in the direction that we need to go in, whether it's spiritual or in our um, career path or whatever. Start listening to that aspect of yourself, opening up the third eye. And, and that third eye can also mean oh, that you need to spend more attention being intuitive, listening to that voice that comes from within you, you know, like stopping and asking and, and being aware of it and saying, okay, I'm going to listen to that inner guidance. What is it that I need to know? And maybe it's even playing little games with yourself like, okay, um, what's, what, um, you know, if I'm going to take this direction or that direction, what do I need to know? And listen to that inner voice. So I think that it's going to become uh, a really important aspect for us to start to uh, open up that, that um, third eye chakra a little bit more. And they're asking us to become aware of what we're attached to. Because as soon as we become attached to things, we're going to then hold on really tight. And when we're holding on tight to something, we're not going to allow the flow to come in. And we're going to sometimes miss opportunities because we're too attached to an outcome. And it may be that um, I want to have a new car. Well, gee, I want a, um, a Mazda and I'm really attached to this particular one. But meanwhile, you may have the opportunity to get um, a Toyota. <laughs> but you're not you're so attached to one that you're not seeing the opportunity for something else um, so look into and and I think the the with the intuition with the third eye um, we can see what we are attached to in life and maybe we're attached to certain outcomes or maybe we're attached to uh, finding that particular job that we've applied for or that particular person that we want to have a romantic relationship and so we are focusing on that attached to, attached to that that we're missing the opportunities that are arising around us so um, they're asking us to allow ourselves to not to see what we are attaching our energies to and to listen to that inner voice to say you know, maybe it's time to let go a little bit so that you can open up to other things that may come into your life. And, you know, with the last card, the man holding the coin, um, that's obviously about abundance. And the abundance is going to flow, whether it's abundance in relationships, whether it's abundance in career, whether it's a financial abundance, your, your opportunities are going to open up as we start to um, become more aware of our that inner voice that we listen to, of our intuition, looking to see what we're attached to, and just letting go of the grip uh, that we have on things so that we are able to see um, the flow and the more opportunities because as I said, this year is about eight. It is about abundance. So we have, as that last coin, last card, that abundance card that comes in. So we're going to just allow the outcome of things that we have in our life to flow and um, not be so attached to the outcome. Just, you know, like put it out there. See what we are looking for and um, see what comes into our life because they will we will have lots of opportunities to bring in um, the new energies and um, I'm going to pull one card here from the divine abundance and it's going to give us that sort of overlying answer and it's going to be this one change When the ego finally sees the utter madness of trying to control everything 
you come to a sacred crossroads in your own evolution. And so that's the card that comes at the top of this. And um, yes, we're, we're in that flow of change. We're in that um, opportunity for us to let go and again what it says here is it's the ego and yeah sometimes our ego is trying to control things too much and instead of letting the ego let your intuition start to uh control your life um and that's what i'm getting i don't know if erica are you back yeah and anything else you wanted to add to it or not no terry okay Okay, so um, yeah, does anybody have any any comments or any questions with regard to to Okay, let me stop it. I think I didn't stop it. Okay. Ooh, computer crazy. <laughs> So there were some moments during the private readings where some of these, did some of these cards pop up again? I can't hear you. Sorry about that. Um, yeah, some of the cards popped up again and it was really interesting because one of the cards that kept coming up was intuition and the other one even though it wasn't in that main that main reading but it was the magician that came up and I did in the readings that I did um I think an, almost in all of the readings or three out of the four or, or four out of the five whatever I did the magician card came up which was which was this one the magician in the mirror and uh, it's interesting because the number on it is 53 which uh, which equals an eight which is mm. the, the year of the eighth so that was it was really a profound thing that came as well as intuition that was kept coming up and so uh reflecting on it became really interesting is that for m most of the people it was the same theme everybody's life is different but it was that theme of being the magician and that we have the magician is the one who creates the magic is the power and when it came to my reading I I picked up a card from you know like I get a, a daily tarot and the magician came to me as well so I feel that it's it's more than just an individual thing I think it's an overall um um, message for us is that we do have that ability within us and that when we look in the mirror who is it that we're seeing um, and is it is it uh, it's a reflection of ourselves and if we're seeing that magician it's like this is who we are but we also have to realize that the mirror is going to reflect back all kinds of other things to us and so we have to get past the illusion and I think the um, um, our intuition is uh, is a guide that we have to trust so that it makes us that powerful magi uh, magician that we are and and we step we're stepping into that power and we're going to see a lot of illusions around us and and you know that veil is starting to fall and so be being strong in who we are uh, and knowing who we are um, instead of that reflection in the mirror is going to be very dominant for us this year. And we have to trust our own intuition and trust our own power. For sure. So it show is actually same messages showing up for you personally. Um, I'm looking for what I had. Uh, oh, I know what I'm doing something backwards. So the first thing that that I found interesting um, before I came home, I do want to show it on the screen. Well, I'll I'll just show the one thing. Um, yesterday, 
I was over there on Goldilocks production and this is shared screen. You can see it. Yeah. Robin, uh, cosmic soul food. She was doing readings. I didn't even ask for a reading. It was right at the end. And she was like, okay, I'm sorry if I didn't get to get everybody. And she pulled the card for me and it came up with this one. The, th <laughs> the third eye activation, brow, inner vision, clear seeing. And I thought it was interesting because usually when it comes to like third eye meditations and things like that, we think, oh, I already got my third eye open. I'm good, you know? So you you think, how is there a new, a new activation? But as we were talking yesterday, we got to talking, me, you, Dom, and everybody else about the fact that some of us felt somewhat withdrawn, slightly depressed, and I describe it as being in a, some type of void where we were just looking at things like, does anything matter? Does any Is anything important? And you had a, an extremely amazing explanation for this point that we hit because we feel like we've developed, you know, and done all these things, but you, um, can you speak on that? Like you, you told us. Well, you know, we, we grow, um, we're growing mentally, like we're learning things. Um, and, and we're, we're downloading information, but we have to remember that it's coming from here and it's coming down into our, our physical being and our physical being is a you know a bunch of different cells and we are at a frequency and we're introducing more and more new and higher frequencies but that means that you know when you have a container and it's already full uh you've got to empty the container before you can put more stuff in it and so as we're bringing in higher information we have to let go of some of the other stuff and so that means when people talk about having ascension symptoms what is it you know we have blockages in our, in our physical being that we have to um we have to release some of those old energies and some of those old frequencies and and so sometimes we may have to do like a gentle detox or whatever it is that our bodies are going to require so that we can hold a higher frequency and we can't be down on ourselves from for that because we're making room in our be in our physical vessel in our temple for the new information that comes in and that means letting go of stuff and it's like cleaning out a closet you know you're going to buy new things but if you haven't got new things in room for the new things in the closet you're eventually going to have to get rid of some of those old tennis shoes because you've got a brand new pair of, of, of sneakers right but the old ones you're not wearing them anymore it's time to get rid of that crap right and and so that we're in the same way in this physical being we're bringing in new new information we've got to let go of the other stuff let go of those lower frequencies so that we can we can um, fill ourselves with those higher vibrations and so we were talking about it earlier you know some of the vibrational frequency medicines you know like the foods you eat but even introducing things like bach flower remedies homeopathic medicines uh, essential oils those are all frequency uh, related and they can support us as we are going through that change and, and letting go of stuff they're there sort of as a crutch for us and so we should you know, look into those kinds of things because they're there as a support. Uh, crystals are another one that can support us in that. But we can't be down on ourselves uh, <clears throat> that that oh, I'm not, I've learned and I feel like I don't know anything. Maybe when we're at that point of not knowing anything, or like I've learned all the stuff and I feel I don't know anything, that's that time to start letting go of the old stuff so that we're making room for this new stuff. Yeah, and like it's, it's an opportunity to look at what you've got in front of you and decide what, what is important. I think um, people try to pretty much eat the whole elephant when it comes to sacred knowledge, hidden knowledge, all this stuff. And it's like you're spending all this time cramming all these things into your heads. But how is it important for your journey? And I was watching a whole nother show and the, 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 the woman, it was so cool. She was just talking about how she liked all these self-help books, which basically that's what this is. You're taking in pretty much, how am I going to make myself a better person? And you're trying to educate yourself in the university of life. But 
all of that information doesn't apply every day. And so what do you need for today? What do you need for right now? Because I think everybody's, people are carrying everything and they want to learn everything and hold it. They want to devour every bit of knowledge all at once. But what is pertinent to you right now today as you go through today? Okay, now brush up on this today. And, um, but some people, they, they, they want to learn so much that they never get a chance to implement things because they're so busy digging and digging and digging and not getting a chance to, okay, so now you learn the properties of water. Do you just keep reading or do you say, how do I implement this into my life? Okay. And then before you move on to the next thing that you want to keep dumping, data dumping into your life, you make sure that you make a change first and then you introduce something new. Because like we discussed with the detox, I said, well, the first thing you do is increase how much water you take. Next thing you do will be figure out what kind of supplements or how you can add certain herbs to your diet that will benefit you. Then you will look at, oh, what are some things I can eliminate? And you don't say, you know, you can do a detox just you know, like they have the seven day detox, but are you just trying to do a quick dump <laughs> or, <laughs> are you, or are you trying to figure out a way to, to build a new life for yourself? Are you trying to figure out a way that you can sustain? Well, before you, you know, and then to, if you take this dump, just also know that as you do dump and release things, you also are dumping and releasing good things as well. And I think, you know, even when you come to spiritually releasing things, like you release certain relationships that are bad for you, but there are some little benefits in there that otherwise you wouldn't have had the relationship in the first place. So you got to find ways to bring the good back in too, right? Because if you lose love yeah. in some form, because it's like, oh, I have this attached to the love that I have for this person. I still have to what replace that with some self-love and some friendship or a pet or so. Like you have to still, you can't just completely eliminate certain things from your life without actually putting the good back in. So to replace even negative mm -hmm. thoughts, you have to put in some positive thoughts. And so I don't know if I even went like far, far left, <laughs> but we were just talking about, you know, um, but don't, don't try to do it all at once and still all just being gentle with yourself. So while we were talking, I was sitting there patting my back, like, yes, but be gentle with yourself, especially men too sometimes. But men and women, we have this inner voice that's like really toxic as heck and will tell you, you're so stupid, you're so dumb, you made this mistake, but you really were just learning a lesson. So one of the cool things that happens- well, well, and, and, that, and, oh. and that's, that's it, we have, we have these expectations that when we learn something that we're going to like, all of a sudden we've changed but you know if we go through that scale you know like we're we are evolving and we you know like we want to jump from here to here but we have to take these other steps and those other steps have to be grounded so we can get this information but we can't sustain it here it's going to put we're going to be pulled down but we're not going to be pulled down to here. We're going to be pulled down to here. And, and so we have to make room to hold all of this information. And meantime, we're learning more, more, more and more and more. And we're disappointed and we feel like we've slipped, but we haven't. We're, we're higher than we were two years ago. We're higher than yeah. we were six years ago. And we, sometimes we're, our expectations, and, and this is the expectations of society. We just like want things immediately, but we have to go through that the the energy those frequencies have to make the changes within our physical being and and so part of it is is you know like the intentions that we put and maybe the intention that we have you know every day is that i'm living my soul's highest purpose you know and see what what it brings to us and and you know opening up to like the intuition that you got the intuition this this the the sixth chakra is it's it's about the intuition and that's that inner voice we got to just listen to that aspect of ourselves that that's saying you know what you got this girl <laughs> you're, you're doing yeah. it 
So you are doing it. Just continue on with it. This is your intention is I'm doing this and I'm getting it and, and uh, I'm good. And, and don't, don't put yourself down because you haven't uh, uh, become, you know, this big guru um, mm -hmm. because, you know, that's just, you have to expand your energy, energy body. And um, yes. even when it comes to wealth, you have to expand your energy body to take in new wealth. So we can only be as wealthy or, as um, abundant as our energy will allow. And as we remove these um, mental blocks and uh, self-limiting beliefs. So the, the other thing that happened was that I was, I just came home and I saw the, the lamp. So it's the lamp, it's like six foot tall and it has the shade like this. And I kept seeing the shadow inside and I was like, what the heck could be inside? And this is the blue feather that I found. <laughs> and I'm like, why would a feather be all the way in the top of the lamp? But it was meant for me to get that message about that blue feather. And um, let me see if I got it up here. That is the number, the number that I kept seeing because I got a mid month bill. Well, I'll go back to, well, Where's the feather? Here's the bill. Okay, so I got a mid-month bill that said my bill was thirty-three forty-four for electric, but then something else came to me and and it had thirty-three forty-four. So I said I'm gonna look this up, and it had to do with manifestation, be can trust in the universe, basically like trust your instincts and to remain positive. So I always look for feathers when I'm going places. And I look for numbers that are repeating. And then I went through my phone, I looked 3344, and I was like, wait a minute, I do, I have been seeing this number and, and I've captured it a couple of times, but didn't notice it. So the blue feather is the type of feather has positive spiritual dimension, may offer you a sense of inner peace and even represent your inner soul. But if you go look up the blue feather, it talks about the um, intuition and the third eye again. And so I was like, this is pretty consistent with Terry, with Robin, with the feather. So I'd love to hear in the comments what signs that you're seeing. And are you seeing a lot about the intuition and the third eye? Let us know. Um, leave us a message, thumbs up, subscribe, like. Let us know we're doing a good job and I'd love some more talent on the show, people who have a story to tell. And pretty soon we'll be talking about high controlling uh, religious background. So people who've been in extremely strict religions, like um, there's the show Shiny Happy People, how people have been in extremely strict religious cults and how it's affected them, but also how to deconstruct. And then also we're gonna be talking to my um, Samuel Chong soon and this discussing more about maybe the pyramids and actually more about the Thea Uba prophecies and the different beliefs that people have, how it, how it uh, goes along with different books about Lemuria and Atlantis, how these things all fit together. But it's been great. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Even though I was away and having a good time, I was like, hmm, I'm ready to get back to work. <laughs> it's exciting. We have lots, lots of possibilities. Yeah. So yeah. many more than we yeah. are allowing trust, ourselves to trust, see. Trust your trust your self at being the magician you are the magic in your life and don't look outside of yourself to find that magic it's there within you and just that's trust true it. i forgot about this part because i kept saying it reminds me of michael jackson the man in the mirror because it's talking about you're you're looking for someone else to change things for you but you are the one that can make the change right exactly. and that's what that exactly. whole song is about but and trust <laughs> trust yourself Trust yourself and, and that intuition. Trust the those inner voices that you hear that, that are coming from your higher self. And just yeah, I was going to say clean your mirrors. So you know yeah. what? I actually woke up this morning and was cleaning all my mirrors because it was just about what? Clear vision. Mm -hmm. Clear vision. And I'll put that back on the screen before we um, get out. Oh, no, I can't. Oh, let me go back. 
because I think that's a that was a really cool card. I love it. Which and one? I, um, I can't show it to you, Terry. It's a secret. Oh, okay. I'm just. <laughs> I know it's like I know you are winning mine. I know you are winning mine. Uh, okay, so that that's it. Now can you see it? No. Okay, let me do this, and then let me do this. Ah, it was up there twice. Okay, yeah, here it is. Oh, that one. Yes, the third eye activation. Lovely. Wow, inner inner vision, clear seeing. I see a bird. I see a dove in here. I do too. Yeah. Which that reminds was... me of that of that wonderful song. I can see clearly now. Yeah, the rain is gone. That used to be one of my favorites. It it's was my, it's still my favorite song. It just like whenever I feel down, I that song will just automatically take me from here to here. And it was interesting too last night with Robin because I think she pulled that card a lot for a lot of people. They had readings with more than one card, but a lot of people got this card. So it must be the collective telling the collective. Her, you know, hey, this is it. Open your eyes. Yeah. Open your eyes. Exactly. <laughs> trust yourself and trust yourself. Yes. Right. Good night. Good night. Oh. Terry, you know, you know, I done lost the button, so I'm, I'm gonna hit leave and kick you out.